Hello, this is David D. Hilser. I'm a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not science woke, then this is the place for you. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world who've been working for decades outside the mainstream, who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so you want to make sure you go down below right there and click on the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and you'll be alerted to when our next video drops. Well, I am on the email list, or pay more or less on the um, list where I get emails from this guy, and who is he? He's one of my favorite dudes, and that is Dr. Glenn Borkert, Mr. Infinity, the Infinity Guru, and one of the great natural philosophers of our time. And this is his blog, of course, The Scientific Worldview. Just go right down below. I do have a link to it. I highly recommend you subscribe to it as well because his articles are really short but really full of stuff. And uh, if you haven't, you don't know a lot about the scientific worldview, and I don't think I've ever uh, read this or showed you, for those who haven't been there, uh, this is what's written about it, and I agree with it uh, wholeheartedly. This blog, uh, this is a blog that takes the name of my magnum opus on uh, scientific philosophy called The Scientific Worldview, which is a book Look it up, Glenn Borkert. I recommend it. Everybody should read that. Re uh, reviewers have called it revolutionary, exhilarating, magnificent, magnificent, fascinating, and even breath a breathtaking synthesis of all understanding. This is a, uh, there is very little math in it, no religion, no politics, no psychobabble, and no BS. It provides the first outline in the philosophical perspective that will develop during the last half of the Industrial Social Revolution. And he talks about that. He's very much in the sense of the Kuhnian philosophy. It's uh, talking. He's talking about what is the scientific philosophies that we have now, what are the assumptions that science should have and what we don't have, and what, what havoc that's wrought upon science. Uh, so really great uh, blog, highly recommended that you read. But I'm going to take a look at this article today, which is really, really short but really, really profound. And this comes uh, on the heels of some new evidence. This uh, is not new evidence, but an older picture, which I actually saw a big blow up of this at the um, Flagstaff, Arizona, at the Hubble, um, not the Hubble, I think the, the Lowell Observatory, which is a observatory at Flagstaff, Arizona, because it's high up in the mountains in the high desert. And uh, this is not uh, taken there, but at that at observatory, it's interesting to note that in the 1930s, they came up with looking and finding redshift. What did redshift uh, try, what people thought maybe redshift was, the movement of all the objects in the universe going away from us and therefore the Big Bang. So it had a lot to do with the Big Bang. And this picture happened to be there when I was there in 1996 for the very th the third uh, NPA conference with uh, when I met John Chappelle. And uh, that the front at the MPA, that's a progenitor of, of the CMPS, which we have today. And that was sitting on the wall, and I looked at it, and it says right here, a close-up of a small portion of the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Note that these objects are various colors. Most are not red, as implied by the misnomer cosmological redshift. Color is determined by frequency, not by wavelength. He's, of course, this is a figure from the uh, Infinite Universe Theory book. Uh, which uh, I, I have actually viewed, and you can go right up there uh, and get that uh, review of that book. If you want to take a look at that, that's from Glenn Borkert, his latest book. And, and again, what this is, is that, that when Hubble went up there, and, and I saw this in 1996, so this picture is from the 1990s, they took, it, took Hubble and they pointed it to a place in space that was pitch black, that we couldn't see anything. And guess what they found? <laughs> Full of stuff. And that's what this uh, blog article's all about. Well, uh, this is Glenn Bork Borker continuing. Of course, the Big Bang Theory claims that we should be we should see younger and younger objects the further we look out into space. And of course, right down below right here, you have a diagram or a figure seven from his in in infinite universe theory book. And it says NASA's official view of what the Big Bang universe should look like. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I won't even display it, just explain it because there's just so many problems with this idea that it's expanding, but we're seeing back into the universe because if we're seeing back into the universe, it took us 13 billion years ago. It took us 13 billion years to get to it, but it's not the stuff that happened at the Big Bang right next to it. So we're not, see don't try to figure it out. All you can see there that over here, you can see that there's that purple thing and that's where the Hubble ultra deep field was looking into and they said there was really nothing there but lo and behold at that point 
what's happening well let's take a look because this just came out here in 2019 and um going back again he says of course the, i'm going to repeat this because it continues on the next page of our next uh, slide here of course the big bang theory claims that we should see younger and younger objects the further we look out into space so far there is no evidence to support that conjecture instead the presence of elderly galaxies as you can see in figure nine uh which is this figure below falsifies above oh, oh no figure nine above falsifies the theory why because now borloff and others have done a computer analysis of the hubble photos coming up with this below so this is the same thing as this oh sorry as this but now it's got a bunch of other stuff around it. So you can see all the galaxies that they saw. And this again in a place where they thought there was nothing in the first place. And this is a uh, figure that's in the book, uh, his book. It says this, uh, the new version of Hubble's deep image. Uh, in, gray, in gray is the new light that has been found around galaxies in this field. The light corresponds to the brightness of more than 100 billion suns. This is credit from uh, A.S. Borloff and others, 2019. So that's uh, for those people who are watching this uh, pretty much the time I'm recording it. That's just just now. And uh, once again, it, it, this is Borker talking. Once again, it looks like there is more to the universe than previously recognized. In the in, in Infinite Universe Theory, page 289, I predicted that improvements in instrumentation should will soon will result in the discovery of cosmological objects older than 13.8 billion years. That is the currently accepted age of the universe. IUT, I, IUT figure 7 will, sub, will be severely tested when the Webb telescope replaces the Hubble after March 2021. That is the bigger Hubble uh, uh, telescope out in space. I'm going to see even further. Will that put the kibosh on the Big Bang Theory, the BBT? Will that will that big telescope going out there? Will that convince people and cosmologists that maybe the Big Bang isn't a good theory? Cosmologists, no doubt, will invent some new ad hocs to re rescue the theory one more time. Readers might remember that my prediction is that the Big Bang Theory will not be discarded until 2050. And he actually talks about the cycles of the way things go in scientific rev revolutions, etc. And you can read that, of course, in his Scientific Worldview book, which, uh, of course, I have a copy and you can buy online. So uh, it's uh, pretty amazing. Here's the uh, link, and I have that down below, down below, right down there. I have that link so you can read the the uh, um, this uh, article about going in and seeing all this light now in a place where it shouldn't be in, in more mature galaxies that we shouldn't be seeing at that that deep part in space because it's sort of starting to start starting to look like the big bang didn't happen at all and uh this is about glenn borkert if you don't know uh this is from the same page so i'll just read it for you for those people who don't have time and look at this and dave hey i don't have time but i have time to listen to you and uh and this is great because i'll learn things it's sort of like audiobooks for dissidents <laughs> Uh, I have over 50 years of theoretical, experimental, and observational experience as a scientist, especially interested in scientific philosophy. Although I have produced over 400 scientific reports, including journal articles, chapters, books, and computer programs, the best by far is my book, The Scientific Worldview, Beyond Newton and Einstein. Yeah, that's probably his seminal book, uh, Understanding the Universal Mechanism of Evolution. And uh, he's really more talking about the universe more than he is about life. It imposes the ultimate challenge to the, to the current theory, wildly popular, popular, though absurd, claim that the, the universe is finite and that it exploded out of nothing. <laughs> boy, that's really hard to really, oh boy, I don't know, uh, explode out of nothing, uh, that seems like a reasonable... <laughs> The book is completely logical from the beginning to the end in support of an infinite universe and a scientific, philosoph scientific philosophical approach that will replace the Big Bang Theory and the, system, the system's philosophy supporting it. The challenge for me is to get readers uh, intelligent enough and educated enough to handle the ideas present, presented and to understand the book's great significance. The paradigm that I propose is antithetical to the conventional uh, to conventional physics and astronomy and cannot be taken seriously by those who hold the idealism of mathematics to be the 
true test of reality. So yeah, he's saying you got to have some smarts, but if you like science, you don't have to be a PhD in other in, in order to understand what he's doing. Um, it is really a, a great uh, blog. You should check it out. Uh, this is a one great article, and basically he's just saying, hey, evidence just came out fresh, hot off the presses from science, that they went back to the place where they didn't even think they'd see anything, that they saw galaxies, and that these galaxies are way, way, way more mature than they should be seeing if there was a Big Bang. That's kind of evidence against it, but no, we keep going along. <laughs> Say the Big Bang, the Big Bang is... But, you know, like I said, don't take my word for it. Even Glenn Borkert's word for it. Don't take, take our word. You've got to stay critical. You've got to stay thinking. I am David D. Hosser, your science therapist, trying to get you to the promised land of becoming science woke. Ciao for now.